Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. Yeah, and we begin with breaking, breaking news. New developments in the case of a San Antonio woman who was shot and killed by a San Antonio police officer. Tonight, the Bear County District Attorney's Office announcing it will be reopening the 2019 case after body camera footage of the shooting surfaced. Hannah Westall was killed in March of 2019. Police said the 26 year old pointed an Uzi BB gun at Sergeant David Perry while she walked in a northwest side parking lot. It turned out to be a non functional replica. The defenders last year uncovered SAPD dash camera video that contradicted the department's narrative. The video instead showed Westall repeatedly being shot without her ever pointing the fake gun at the officer. This week, a source provided the defenders a copy of body worn camera footage. The DA's office says they never received footage from Perry's body camera and they were told by the city it didn't exist. In a statement, DA Joe Gonzalez said in part, quote, we have recently discovered that Sergeant Perry's body cam video was included in his internal affairs file that our office independently obtained. In light of this additional evidence, the entire case will be reviewed again and presented to a different grand jury at a later date. Well, we almost made it through the day without any rain, but some fast moving showers are moving through right now. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey with the details on the rain we got, what we're getting and who could still get some still to come. Yeah, San Antonio is out there somewhere <laughs> in those clouds. A downtown hotel already undergoing a transition into a homeless shelter tonight. The city of San Antonio leased out the days in at East Houston and I-37 last month to run as a low barrier emergency shelter. The Sam Ministries, which was tapped to run the facility, took over the property last week. They've already brought in some existing clients. Now Garrett Berger tells us they're getting closer to ramping things up. Having struggled with substance abuse and other shelter options, Kelsey Trevino was looking to get her life back on track. And I wanted to take oil. All that stuff that was bad and just move on and get my daughter back to court when I get all my life together. She means a lot to me. As a client from a previous Sam Ministries pilot program, Trevino is one of the people already occupying 10 of the 45 rooms at the organization's downtown hotel turned shelter. So far, she's happy with the help she's getting. They're trying to get me housing right now, and then they got me shelter. And nobody wanted to just help me like that. They're like, no, because you're on drugs. And they actually like told me, it doesn't matter what you're on. So this is um, really just a traditional room. Nikisha Baker, the CEO and president of Sam Ministries, says this new facility is meant to help people who may have trouble accessing or navigating traditional shelters. That means people with drug problems, emotional or behavioral health issues, even registered sex offenders. This facility is really designed for clients who have a high level of service needs. Bottom line, it's about getting people off the street, connected to the resources that will help ensure that they stay off the street for good. Baker says the property could be ready for new clients as soon as next week. She says they've got enough staff to handle people staying here, but they're still trying to bring on more people to run all the services that they plan to have. Plans include on-site peer support groups, licensed substance abuse counselors, medical care, and ID recovery services. Other agencies will be able to refer people, and Baker knows that there will be plenty. The goal is that we're able to convert 40% of the folks who are here within 90 days to a permanent housing solution. Freeing up space to hopefully help more. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Witness after witness today testifying to seeing the shooting of Detective Benjamin Marconi on November 20th of 2016. One of those witnesses first on the scene seconds after the shooting occurred. Our Erica Hernandez is more on this testimony. Erica, a busy day at the courthouse. Yeah, that's right, Steve. Well, Mike Flores was out for a drive when he noticed a man holding a gun approach an SAPD patrol unit that was pulled over and then heard gunshots. Flores testifies saying after hearing shots, he quickly made a U-turn to the scene. And while the suspect was running back to his vehicle, he pulled over as well and ran out toward the SAPD unit. At the same time, the suspect's vehicle pulls away. Flores said he looked inside the cop car and saw Detective Marconi hunched over and bleeding. He described the entire incident as an execution style killing. Because officer never saw it coming. If, uh, if he had, it would have been a different outcome. The best way I can explain it, when he opened the door, put in, shot, like uh, the officer never, never had a fighting chance. 
Now, Flores also testified that he later picked out Otis McCain from a photo lineup and identified him in court. Now, other testimony was given today by the man who worked at the Rena Tire, where tires and rims were sold to Otis McCain, as well as from an officer who arrived at the scene. From on all this testimony, just head to KSAT.com. Patty? Well, there are several ways to protect children from COVID-19. A local pediatrician shared safety tips as local leaders presented the latest findings by Metro Health about the recent spike in cases. Tiffany Huertas joins us live with more on what they had to say. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Patty. Local leaders are reminding parents that have children who are 12 years and older, they can get vaccinated. And with school starting in just a few weeks, now is the time. Take a look at this video from earlier today. Local leaders and health experts held a briefing this afternoon after data showed the positivity rate nearly doubled over the past week, jumping from 5.8% to 11.2%. 258 people are now hospitalized as they battle the virus. There are concerns with children returning to school in the fall. Health experts say it's highly recommended unvaccinated students continue wearing masks to slow the spread of the virus. Layers of protection, which the number one is vaccinate if you're eligible, get vaccinated. Number two, wear masks. You know, um, because that is going to add on a layer of protection if you don't have the first layer. Number three, wash your hands. And number four, maintain distance. And I know that's hard with kids, but the, ch the people around them should be vaccinated. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says that they will continue to operate pop-up clinics and they will be working with school districts to make sure parents are aware of the vaccine availability. Currently, more than one million people in Bear County are fully vaccinated. City leaders say the increase of these cases we're seeing is due to the Delta variant and more people continue to gather. Now, there are many places you can still get vaccinated, including this site. This is St. Agnes Catholic Church. Remember, no appointment is needed and it is free. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Tiffany. We have new information about a man who was shot as he was laying in his bed last Friday. It happened on the east side. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office identifying that man as 63 year old Kenneth Cunningham. The shooting happened at the home off Ferris Avenue, not far from East Commerce. San Antonio police say the suspect walked to the side of the home and allegedly fired shots into it, one of which hit Cunningham in the back. He was found dead when police arrived. Well, San Antonio police are out to solve an overnight shooting, but they may be on their own. They say the victim was of that shooting was not being cooperative. It happened outside a home on the northeast side in the 4200 block of Chestnut Hill Drive. And as Katrina Weber reports, police say the man was in the driveway when trouble rolled up in an SUV. Evidence in the middle of a northeast side street points to a crime that happened in the driveway of a home. A man standing there in the 4200 block of Chestnut Hill was hit by bullets fired from an SUV. He told San Antonio police he was helping a friend clean a food trailer when he was shot shortly after midnight. He was hit in the face, taken to a hospital with what police described as a non-life-threatening wound. The shooter, it seems, aimed wildly also hitting several parked cars in the process. Out here in the daylight, you can still see signs of the property damage that was done. There's broken glass in the street, and I counted at least seven bullet holes in this car. Some slammed into the back and side, while others shattered the window. Police say the shooter took off in the SUV along with two other people. Early on, they said the shooting appeared to be random. A later report says the victim was uncooperative. Right now, police are still trying to sort it all out to figure out who shot the man and why. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Traffic authority check right now. Let's go to a trans guide camera at loop 410 at Ingram Road and you can see that at least a couple of lanes actually looks like maybe an on ramp further down closed right now. You can see it is raining and that's the lanes of traffic that are open are moving very slowly. Again, this is loop 410 north at Ingram Road traffic trouble spot to show you. Some would say the fight over voting rights in Texas started with the late Willie Velasquez. He created the Southwest Voter Registration Education Project. It actually began in 1974 right here in San Antonio. Jesse DeGoriato with a look back. 
Latinos know whoever they're voting for stands a chance of winning, or maybe not, but at one time. Even if all the Latinos came out to vote, they wouldn't be able to get elected because the, the system was rigged. Longtime attorney Rolando Rios took on gerrymandering and at-large voting, alongside the late civil rights pioneer Willie Velasquez, who founded the Southwest Voter Registration Education Project. He got people registered, but then he realized registration is not enough. Single-member city council districts are just one example of the lawsuits they won. What do you think Willie Velasquez would be saying now? Right now, Willie would be at the leadership table in Washington with our state reps. More than 50 House Democrats who've left Texas and the Texas House of Representatives without a quorum to take up bills they say will make it harder for people to vote. The bills, a result of the U.S. Supreme Court gutting Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act in 2013. Up until then, any election changes in Texas had to be pre-cleared by the federal government. Rio says the justices had decided. It's been a long time. The states have a right to run their elections however they want. Rio says San Antonio and other major Texas cities now may have more Latinos in leadership, but when asked if that means the fight is over. It's not. Judging, he says, by what's happening in Austin and in Washington. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. All right, taking a live look outside. You know, this rain that's moving in, it is really messing with people's pool time. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. They're, thir they're winning not pool time. Not, <laughs> no, ours. not, not ours. Not ours, but some it. people out there, I'm sure. <laughs> We're fine. Yeah, as with the last couple of days, we've seen these sea breeze showers work their way in right uh, at around the evening commute. The temperature at the airport dropped to 76 from 89 because of a passing shower through there. And we're still seeing some spots on the road. This is I-10 at Proban. You can see that the, uh, the roads are wet right there. All right, where's the rain right now? Well, we're seeing it taper off around San Antonio, downtown San Antonio but up in the north part of the county near Leon Springs, some very heavy rain occurring briefly near Bulverde and Temperwood Park and Stone Oak. These are pushing to the north, so we're not worried about major flooding issues, just some minor street ponding possible. Also on the southwest side of town between loops 410 and 1604, seeing some rain there as well. And in parts of Guadalupe County, just to the north of McQueeny, a few flashes of a lightning. Get used to this weather pattern where we'll have a pretty quiet day during the day, but a few pop up showers and storms in the afternoon. I'll have a look at that forecast coming up in a bit. All right, the weather situation outside. It was Morning. interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you see? Oh, you were in here, but the the, the wind just started moving the well, trees. I saw the radar. I'm like, wow, look at that huge line. It's heading right for us. Everybody that was in, inside the building went outside to take pictures and to look at the storm moving in. Everybody loves the weather when it's it, raining. Everybody loves the weather. And, and right. you know what? We have had a few of those heavy thunder showers that have moved through. Nothing has been severe, but if you've gotten one of those pockets of heavier rain, you see the wind pick up. Up, you see even potentially some lightning and some thunder. These thunder showers that have been occurring in the afternoons, they're fairly isolated in nature and they pass quickly. And so we're not really worried about major flooding issues, but it does. It is kind of a wow factor and you don't want to be driving out there right now. So it's not a great time for this rain to be coming on through uh, because it is causing some problems on the roads. But we were here in downtown San Antonio. We got a heavy rain shower moving through. As you can see now, just some lingering light rain in downtown San Antonio and in around downtown San Antonio. We've got some pockets of heavier rainfall uh, just between loops 410 and 1604 on the west side of town along Highway 90 and a quick shower moving to the north of Castroville and through Rio Medina. The heaviest of the rain right now is near uh, the north side of town. So Leon Springs, the rim area, although this is dying down and Bulverde Timberwood Park pushing into Comal County as we speak. We've also got some isolated showers up in Kerr County and just to near comfort. But if you're in Guadalupe County uh, and this is a this is a pretty noisy storm that's moving through. Look at all these flashes of lightning that are moving through McQueenie area just to the south of Seguin. This is pushing due north. So New Braunfels, you're about to get a quick burst of heavier rain, potentially even some gusty winds of up to 40 miles per hour with that moving on through. And it's been impressive, even though it's only been raining for a short amount of time in places, we've seen a decent amount of rainfall. These are healthy rain producers with some heavy rain at times. So we'll go ahead and look at the rainfall 
rainfall totals just from this afternoon and you can see the impressive numbers here at the 12 hour rain. So look at the uh, areas of green anywhere you see green. That's where we're seeing pockets of up to potentially half an inch to an inch of rain. So near Hollywood Park near Windcrest downtown San Antonio where we were talking about the heavier rain near Palo Alto College and uh, on the southwest side of town. Now, as with uh, summer thunder showers, once we see the sun set, things become quiet and we're just going to have a partially uh, muggy evening with temperatures in the 70s. So feeling great outside and you can already see there's even a little bit of sun uh, coming out from these thunder showers earlier. 89 degrees was the high, then that cool uh, rain cooled air moved through. Temperatures are now in the 70s. 95 is the average, so we were cooler than average again for several days in a row now. And last year we were dealing with the triple digit heat wave uh, back in 2020. It was 105 this time last year. And the reason why we've been able to enjoy an unsettled weather pattern that's kept things cooler than average is because of the upper level steering pattern. We've seen this high continue to allow for winds to be from the southeast. We've got those coastal showers that develop during the early afternoon and push into San Antonio right at around the time of the evening commute. And that's going to be the case tomorrow as well. So let me take you through the future cast again. Starting tomorrow morning, it'll be cloudy with some patchy fog possible. And then once again in the afternoons, we're going to see uh, these uh, pop up thunder showers pushing on through. They're not going to be severe, but they could drop a quick half inch of rain in some spots. And the chance for rain in your backyard is about 20% in the afternoon. Patchy fog in the morning, uh, but again, clearing skies 83 at noon 91. It'll be mostly sunny, but if we do get one of those thunder showers, uh, you'll see mostly cloudy skies and temperatures will drop into the 70s from that rain cooled air. Southeast winds at 10 to 15 gusting up to 20 miles per hour. Warmer out to the west 98 degrees in Del Rio, 97 in Laredo, 91 in Canyon Lake and 89 for the high in Kerrville. Again, coastal showers through the weekend that will try to make a run for I-35 in San Antonio. But then look how our rain chances go up even more by Wednesday of next week. We're probably not going to hit 100 degrees through July, which is really impressive because of this unsettled weather pattern that we have. Now, it's still going to feel like 100 over the weekend because of the high humidity, but technically we're not going to be at 100. And again, this time last year, we were at 105 for the day. So a really unusual weather pattern for us to see this July. Uh, and we'll keep you informed. By the way, if you do see rain, download the KSAT Weather Authority app. You can see a radar there. You can see updates that we send right to your phone because again, this rain will be isolated to scattered in nature in the afternoons. Steve and Patty. All right, you heard it from Sarah. A repeat tomorrow. Make sure you get your umbrella. Have it handy. Yeah, for All sure. Right. Some love for some Judson graduates, Larry. Yeah, Judson Rockets making some noise at the collegiate level here in town and out in College Station. I'm talking about Judson alumni, Sincere McCormick and DeMarvin Leal, picking us some pretty cool honors. And world boxing champ Jermel Charlo was more than happy to hang out with the Boys and Girls Club of San Antonio today. Coming up. Two days off, the NBA Finals will resume tonight with the Phoenix Suns at the Milwaukee Bucks. Phoenix leads the series two games to one. One of the Bucks' biggest challenges is defending Suns point guard Chris Paul on the pick and roll. He's a master at it and is baffling the Bucks in the most basic of ways. It's kind of like the cat and mouse. I'm trying to play chess. Uh, you just have to, a lot of times you just have to figure it out when it when it actually happens. So, so in real time. Um, but that's why Chris goes into pick and roll. Um, he's one of the best at it. He doesn't make it easier for the defender. And uh, for the most part, he gets to the spot or he gets a big rolling. Um, but that's what makes it fun. I guess if you did something over and over again and you kind of figured it out, what would uh, that be boring? Uh, he, so I, I don't know. There's a part of me that's like, it is a bit frustrating that he keeps on switching it up and he's really good at it, but there's also like this fun part in trying to figure out the, the equation. Part of the Suns equation involves all-star guard Devin Booker, who scored 10 points in the Suns game three loss. That's 16 below his playoff average, which could be bad for the Bucks tonight. 
it gets pretty scary after that. Um, um, just knowing his mentality and knowing that games like that don't really slow him down. Um, you know, it's just one of those games, but I definitely know he'll step up and as a team, we'll step up as well. Game four is tonight at eight, live here on KSAT 12. UTSA running backs and Sierra McCormick picked up two more preseason All-American honors. He was named preseason second team All-American by Sporting News and preseason second team All-American from Athlon Sports. McCormick now boasts four preseason All-American nods for major national publications this summer, also making the second teams for Walter Camp and Phil Steele. UTSA punter Lucas Dean was also named preseason second team All-American by Sporting News. Offensive lineman Kenyon Green and defensive lineman DeMarvin Leal will join Texas A&M head coach Jimbo Fisher at SEC Media Days next Wednesday in Hoover, Alabama. Entering his junior season, Leal has become a disruptive force for the Aggies with 75 tackles, 12 and a half tackles for loss and four and a half sacks. Leal is also a consensus 2021 preseason All-American. This afternoon, unified WBC, WBA, and IBF Super Welterweight World Champion Jamero Charlo paid a visit to the Boys and Girls Club of San Antonio. He held a meet and greet with the kids ahead of his fight Saturday night. The Coyote also stopped by to hang out with the kids and the champ. It's a beautiful thing to be here with the children and see, see you know, their, their smiles on their face. You know, we've been through so much all together within the last year or so. So, you know, just to see kids that want to, you know, be inspired, they love boxing and they want to do more for, you know, come to the fights and they want to do more for themselves and possibly uh, this may be something that they do to feed their family. Charlo gave the kids tickets to his fight Saturday night at the AT&T Center when he faces WBO world champion Brian Castaño for undisputed status at super welterweight. All four belts are on the line. WNBA star Candace Parker is making some cool history. The Chicago Sky forward will appear on the NBA 2K22 cover for the WNBA 25th anniversary special edition when it's released September 10th, becoming the first female player on the cover of NBA 2K. Parker joins Luka Doncic, who was named the cover athlete for the game's regular edition and Kevin Durant, Kirk, Dirk Nowitzki and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar who were recognized as cover athletes for the NBA 75th anniversary edition. Pretty darn cool. All right, I love the fact that the WNBA stars on there. Yep. But not a spur on the 75th edition. Mhm. Mm Come on NBA. The Iceman. Yeah, let's get it right. Duncan Robinson. Come on. <laughs> we'll be right back. The State House of Representatives at gridlock right now because, well, half of the delegation isn't there. Republicans are in Austin. Meanwhile, most of the Texas Democrat, Democratic members of the House are in Washington, D.C. State Representative Steve Allison from District 121, it covers a large part of Northeast San Antonio, joins us. Uh, Representative Allison, you're a Republican, but you um, think that there are, there's, there are room that you can make agreements, that things can be worked out between your party and the Democrats who are now in D.C., correct? I absolutely do. I absolutely do. And, we, and we've made such great strides. I think the election bill talking about that uh, has been moving in the, in the right direction for all of us. And I just hate to see it come to a stop this way. Uh, I think uh, if there's areas that are still of concern, uh, just sitting down and discussing and having a dialogue about if there's certain languages needs to be tweaked, uh, if we need to have a discussion about the respective positions to better understand, we need to do that and, and reach something on a bipartisan um, manner that we've come so far. And uh, that's one thing I, I've uh, always prided the Texas legislature about, and I've certainly approached that way. We have to do things in a bipartisan way to accomplish things, and uh, we shouldn't hit a roadblock like this. How big an issue is trust in all this? That Democratic leaders don't really trust Republican leaders and Republican leaders don't necessarily trust Democratic leaders? Well, unfortunately, I think that's become a, a, a big issue. Uh, I think there is a trust factor right now, which is a, another reason why we need to uh, cool down and, and bring people together and, and restore that, because uh, trust is so essential in, in this process. Yesterday, you mentioned the possibility of having a bipartisan working group uh, to look at these issues. Behind the scenes, what is that really looking like? Is someone uh, from both sides really looking at, to get both sides together, or is it just uh, people talking on both ends? Uh, a little bit of both, uh, but I think that's so important, you know, because of the... Uh, 
uh, quorum problem. Uh, we've been shut down completely. We can't have committee meetings, uh, can't do anything on the floor. Uh, no house business can be conducted. Uh, but a working group, I think, would fit uh, within that and still be possible to then report back. And I think it makes a lot of sense uh, to just uh, try to keep this moving uh, and see where their differences still, uh, where they've been addressed, uh, and and move this forward. Uh, uh, and that's, that's what I think uh, the voters of Texas want. I think that's what we need. Uh, and again, to, to get past this issue so we can get to some of the other very important and pressing matters that are on the agenda that we can't reach uh, because of this uh, gridlock or, or a quorum problem, however we want to characterize it. Uh, you know, property taxes are a huge issue in, in my district and throughout the state. Uh, that's on the agenda. Uh, we can't address it because of, of this problem. Uh, teachers. Uh, we had a group of uh, retired teachers in today. You know, there are over 400,000 uh, retired teachers uh, who haven't had a, a raise on their uh, pensions, uh, haven't had a cost of living raise. We gave them a uh, 13th check two years ago uh, and have another one on the table now that we can't do uh, because of, of this gridlock. Uh, foster care system uh, is in a uh, uh, bad situation uh, needs more funding uh, that's another priority that we can't reach and it's a critical need in san antonio that we need to address why uh, why why do you think it, it, there even seems to be a disagreement about whether uh, a voting law is needed at this point why why do you think it is important that some sort of voting regulations get passed this session well, I think we saw that, uh, that last session uh, two years ago, uh, we had a good deal of attention on uh, voting, uh, improving the system, uh, making it easier and more accessible to vote, but at the same time, uh, making it difficult to violate the election laws. Uh, and I think that reform process has been in, in motion ever since then, uh, that I think is increasingly important to have in place. Uh, you know, we want to get the uh, voting percentages up. Uh, they were up this last election, but we're still low in Texas. Uh, and I think if we can refine the system like this bill is intended to do, uh, make uh, voting easier and more accessible, uh, we come a long way to do that. And I think the time is right that we need to do that. There's even uh, disagreements about whether it makes it makes it easier, though. I mean, what you would define as making things easier, some might say, well, you know, there's not widespread election fraud. It's not been proven you know, why are we doing this? And there's some who are even bringing up the issue of poll watchers, where a poll watcher uh, can be a partisan poll watcher, can be allowed, but then, you know, some, you know a, a poll watcher can be have a complaint about, but you can't actually dismiss them until they have two strikes. I mean, there's when you go into some of this bill, there's some things in there that seem odd to me. Well, but, I, you know, I think that's a good example, Steve, is the the poll watcher situation. It's it's uh, come under considerable criticism because of the different versions that have been proposed. I yeah. think it is in a very good spot right now uh, that we don't want any intimidation. Uh, there were earlier uh, proposals where uh, poll watchers could uh, record by audio or video means. That's out now. Uh, I, I think, again, that's another example of moving in the right direction. You know, on the, on the voter fraud, uh, I think we need to move beyond that uh, uh, paranoia or however we want to characterize it and, and maybe look around the country. Uh, the other states that are having such problems, having audits and requests for audits. And we are in a position where we can take some uh, proactive, uh, preventative type measures uh, to make sure we don't get in that situation in the future. And the time is perfect to do that. And I think that's the, the goal and the focus uh, of those provisions. Uh, but as far as making it easier, you know, we've, we're seeing now that uh, greatly increased hours that are important uh, to make it more accessible. Uh, that is very important. We still have provisions for voting by mail, uh, still have provisions for driving for particularly the elderly and disabled uh, that, that is important. So I think we have this moving in, in a very good uh, direction uh, that is going to be helpful to everyone. One of the things that Texans really want to know is what are you doing about the power grid? We were without power in February. We lost lives. And this situation is really what matters moving forward to Texans. Uh, and I agree with you, you know, and, and what goes missed and it, and we see it in the uh, this current dispute of the election bill. There's such partisan rhetoric and agendas that we see in play and they, they miss the facts. 
Uh, and the grid situation is probably a, a primary one. We made very significant initial steps uh, in addressing the grid situation during the recently concluded regular session on weatherization mandates, uh, emergency alert system, local prioritization, address the complete overhaul of ERCOT and PUC, uh, addressed uh, reliability and generation needs going forward. And it's another prime example of what this quorum problem is caused. Today, uh, in the House, the State Affairs Committee was to meet over the grid and have an update and further discussions with PUC and ERCOT. That couldn't take place because of this uh, quorum situation. And, and that's another reason and another point why this thing is so unnecessary and, and so unfortunate, because it's the other things that we're missing that are so important to Texans, uh, so important to our community uh, that we're not able to address because of the walkout. You know what I un, what I appreciate, uh, Representative, is the fact that you and I can come on here and Patty and we can have a discussion and we can talk about some of the issues that are out there and nobody gets their feelings heard and nobody, you know, it, it, that seems to be what's missing in this whole thing. We can just have, we can just talk and learn each, about each other in the position. So I really appreciate your time. Well, I appreciate that comment. That's what it should be all about. And that's what makes our system work. And we're, we slipped away from it. Absolutely. Representative Steve Allison, always appreciate your time. Thank you so Thanks much. much. Appreciate y'all. We'll be right back. A New Hampshire Police Department going electric to chase down the bad guys, at least in one patrol car. Police in Wolfboro say a family donated an electric vehicle to the department. It's a Tesla 2021 Model Y. The commissioner says they are still getting used to it. For example, everything is controlled by a center screen. The commissioner also said it's proving to be a very capable vehicle and hopes the department gets a decade out of it. Interesting. Electric police cruisers. Very interesting. Like with a robot police officer? No, I, mean, I don't want to go all RoboCop. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to do all that. But all right, it's 79 degrees outside. Still some rain in the area. And I think it's a pleasant surprise to get for a lot showers. of people. Yeah, it is, you know, because we get some of those isolated showers that move in. And if you happen to be under one of those, it is cooler outside. You get a lot of rain and we're starting to see the rain come to an end briefly here in San Antonio. Uh, and I want to show you just for a second the rain cooled temperatures out there. 79 now at the airport in San Antonio. Meanwhile, it's still 88 in New Braunfels, 87 in Comfort and 86 in Bandera. Here's a look at the radar. You can see the heavy rain that moved through downtown San Antonio. Now just some light ring lingering uh, and a few flashes of lightning remain for areas in Comal and Kendall County An in in-depth look at the radar and how much rain has fallen in places coming up. The Olympic buzz is building and Ralph Lauren is showing off the team's USA's Olympic outfits. This year, the designer fused fashion and function with a cooling jacket for the opening ceremony. Yeah, it uses state of the art technology to help regulate body temperature so athletes can stay cool in the summer heat. All of the attire manufactured in the US with sustainability in mind. Ralph Lauren has designed the official Team USA gear since 2008. Well, yesterday we showed you comfort food concoction made with macaroni and cheese and ice cream. Yeah. But today the king of comfort food gets the spotlight all to itself. Today is National Mac and Cheese Day. Some credit Thomas Jefferson with bringing the recipe to the United States after he spent some time in Italy. Now, apparently that story could hold some water. Italians have been enjoying pasta and Parmesan for centuries. However, some say the hot dish as they call it in the Midwest. Is that what didn't, they call it? I guess. <laughs> I've never heard that, but a casserole. Yeah, it didn't really take off until Kraft sold its first box of it in 1937. But whether it's a side dish or the main entree, macaroni and cheese always has a starring role at the American dinner table. And I, as I am a huge fan of mac and cheese. I like mac and cheese and peas. You put add peas to it. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's good. I've right. heard of that before. Yeah. I've also heard it kind of rolls off the tongue. Mac and cheese and peas. Yeah, and, and I've okay. also heard like hot dogs. Put oh, yes, dog done that too. Yeah. But that's normal. <laughs> but that's what it's not the traditional. It's not, it's not for the traditionalists, you know, <laughs> out there, you know. But it yeah, isn't. I'm a fan of mac and cheese. You know, it's also not traditional. 
or July so far. If, if somebody would have told you six months ago, we're not going to hit 100 in July, what would you have said? I would have said, yeah, sure, it's possible, but unlikely. And that's exactly the case. I don't think we're going to hit 100 degrees this month because we're going to continue to have these chances in the afternoon for passing quick thunder showers through the end of the weekend into the weekend. And then next week, it looks like we're going to have another active weather pattern. Now, not everybody has seen rain today, but those that have the rain fell down heavy. Uh, there were some gusty winds of up to about 40 miles per hour and pockets and also some flashes of lightning. But you know what? No severe weather and I don't think we're going to see any severe weather either tomorrow. I want to zoom in really quickly so you can see just how heavy this rain was as it moved into San Antonio before dissipating again at the station here in downtown San Antonio it was very heavy at times. We're going to go ahead and put a pause on this and show you that there's still some areas of light rain out there uh, near Lone Oak and Adkins as well as out uh, further to the east into Comal County and into Wilson County. So near Sutherland Springs, Stockdale seeing some light to moderate rain near Seguin as well and across parts of Comal County near Canyon Lake. Canyon Lake, you're about to get a quick heavy rain shower here. Uh, there is some lightning though still in uh, Kendall County near Kendalia and just along I-10 up toward uh, areas like Nelson City. That's where we're seeing some of the rain track along I-10. But back to San Antonio, some light rain still remaining in Lackland Air Force Base and up near Hollywood Park. I want to show you these quick rain showers, how much rain they produced in just about, I would say about less than 30 minutes in some spots. Uh, we've seen some very healthy rain here. Uh, in fact, some areas saw up to in half to inch to an inch of radar estimated rain. Anywhere you see this green, so near Windcrest, near downtown San Antonio, Highland Park, Mitchell Lake, uh, on the southwest side of town, just to the north of Atascosa, and near Hollywood Park in the Stone Oak area, these greens represent a half inch to an inch of radar estimated rainfall. Very healthy rain for a short period of time near Seguin and near New Braunfels as well. And back to the radar and we'll zoom out so that you can see the whole entire situation right now. There's just some lingering passing quick heavy showers in some spots like in Kendall County and points off toward Rock Springs and out west. But with the sunset, it's going to be nice and quiet for the remainder of the evening. We'll have that rain cool there. It'll feel great. We'll have a bit of a breeze from the southeast at five miles per hour. These clouds have increased because of the blow off from these storms, but as we head into the remainder of the evening, we'll see some clearing of the skies. It's still very toasty out toward Del Rio where they haven't seen any rain. 95, but 79 here in San Antonio, thanks to that rain cool there. All right, why are we seeing these afternoon showers? Well, the reason for that is we've got some steering flow that's allowing for these coastal showers to develop in the late morning hours. And then those pu push into San Antonio and toward that I-35 corridor uh, right at around dinner time. And we're gonna see that again tomorrow, isolated rain in the afternoon against some healthy downpours and over the weekend as well 92 over the weekend with some isolated rain and then here's the heavier rainmaker Tuesday and Wednesday that's going to keep our weather pattern active now I do have to caution you over the weekend even though temps are only going to be in the low 90s still going to feel like 100 so tomorrow 75 degrees with some patchy fog clearing skies and 83 at noon it'll be mostly sunny in the afternoon unless we get one of those thunder showers moving through 91 for the high, and again this weekend, just toasty. You shouldn't cancel outdoor plans. Just keep the KSAT Weather Authority app, and then by the middle of next week, highs only in the 80s because of increasing rain chances. So unusual July pattern continues. One of my daughters just sent me a picture of a double rainbow. Nice. Yeah, I'll get that to you, Sarah. In the KSAT Weather Authority app. Put it on there. Is there any other way I would get it to you? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, in case you missed it, it's coming up next. Officials holding a briefing this afternoon after data showed the positivity rate nearly doubled over the past week, jumping from 5.8% to 11.2%. Officials says testing is down. At the height of the pandemic, they would test 60,000 people per week. City leaders say last week they just tested 8,600 people. That's why when we were taking a left and I saw the man get out with the gun, I started panicking and like, what the 
was you doing that because I didn't know if we should honk, but then I thought maybe if you looked up, that wouldn't be helpful. Now, after describing making eye contact with the suspect, Alexandria then identified that man in court as Otis McCain. Now, Alexandria was one of three witnesses to identify and point out the shooter as McCain in court today. Also learned the name of a man stabbed to death earlier this month. The Bear County Medical Examiner has identified him as Hanaro Tabora Luna. He died on July 4th in what San Antonio police describe as a heated argument between family members. And a 29-year-old man is in the hospital after he crashed into a light pole on the city's west side last night. Witnesses told officers at the scene the driver was speeding before he ran a red light, hit an SUV, and then his car hit a light pole. San Antonio police are also investigating a crash overnight that actually involved one of their own. It happened just after 11 last night on Southwest Military Drive. That's near I-35 South. Police say a person riding a motorcycle ran a red light and rear-ended a marked patrol car. The officer wasn't injured, but the motorcyclist was taken to the hospital. They're expected to be okay. That crash is still under investigation. It's all of our time at 6. See you on the night beat after the game. Have a great day.